Good morning. We're missing a few from IHC. Uh, uh, they haven't uh, winged their way back home yet. I hope I hope that their GPS is, still knows where home is, but we'll be glad to have them uh, back when they're able to. And I know that there's some sickness going around. Uh, Brother Gary isn't feeling well this morning, and Griff has pink eye, and um, I mean, Sister Peggy, of course, has been sick for some time, and different ones that we're missing this morning. But I'm glad that you're here, and I trust that you've come this morning with an awareness of a need to be with Jesus. So oftentimes, I think, I think you know, it, as I go about my day, sometimes I can forget how much I just depend on Him, how much I need Him, and and. Every once in a while, I just need to pause and just say, I'm in need of being aware of who he is and how much I need him in this moment. And um, now there's sometimes that's easy, right? When, when things are hard, when things are bigger than what you feel like you are able. But, but folks, we can't take one step without his help. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's invite the Lord to come and meet with us. Amen. It's good to have Brianna home from school. Brianna, would you please invite the Lord to come and meet with us? Amen. Brother Rocky is coming to lead us in the singing this morning. Let's open our hearts and receive, uh, not just receive. I was going to say receive. That's what we usually do during the special. But let's participate. Let's give God the glory. And uh, let's each one participate with all of our heart. In your hymnal, turn to page number 572. 572.
offering for ushers please come forward turn to page number 111 in the hymnal 111 
Thank you, Rocky. Thank you also to our orchestra. Appreciate it so much. Those beautiful songs this morning. I was thinking about how rich our hymns are. So we were singing, Wonderful Lord. And I'm thankful for the reminder of all of those things that we sang about and how wonderful he is. And uh, I can't wait to get to heaven when we start singing perfect songs. And these are really good and wonderful, but we'll have plenty of time. We can sing 48 stanzas about how wonderful he is. And we don't have that time now, but I'm thankful, so thankful how wonderful he is. As we go to the place of prayer, um, let's remember uh, the needs that we've been praying for. Um, let's continue to, uh, many of these on our prayer list that we have known for some time. Um, and so uh, I want to hit some highlights. Let's remember Brenda Hannah especially, Timothy Short. Uh, we, Reese is not on here, but Reese, I believe, is starting uh, another aggressive form of chemo. And uh, they've asked that we would remember Reese in prayer. He's the uh, missionary uh, child that uh, has uh, lymph lymphoma. I have a hard time saying that for some reason. Um, let's continue to remember Judy in prayer. I, she's still waiting on the strength to come back. So, but she's walking, which is better than some of us, right? So, uh, she might. Uh, so, so some of us could maybe use some uh, a walking routine too, but. Um, she's back walking, and we're thank the Lord for that. But let's continue to pray for her as as uh, she's recovering. And uh, end of the month, I believe she can see her doctor, and uh, hopefully we'll get a good report. That's what we're expecting, and uh, trusting the Lord for. So let's pray. Uh, continue to pray for her. Let's remember Ruth Jones. She's got a time of recovery. Is she improving at all, Jimmy? No. no. Okay, that's that's just that's discouraging. One thing when they think they have got it figured out, you start working towards it and expecting to feel better, and things get worse. So let's let's pray about this. Lord would touch and help in this situation. The Lord knows. Uh, Kara Brown's uh, daughter, um, her uh, she came through surgery. Um, I think we shared that last week. Um, she's been fitted with her new helmet, and uh, we thank the Lord for that. And her brain is reshaping itself well. So we, we thank the Lord for that. Um, after the skull surgery, um, it's it's amazing uh, how children can just heal so quickly. But she's going to have to wear this helmet until her first birthday, 23 hours out of the day. And I cannot imagine going to bed trying to sleep in a helmet. Um, I understand that she's uh, a newborn and, and perhaps is a little bit more... Uh, able to deal with that than maybe some of us older ones, but uh, I can't imagine that that's fun even for her. So let's remember, let's remember uh, Kara Brown's little one. I believe her name is Alora. Um, and so if you continue to pray for her, Lorinda's coworker, it's cancer, and also uh, a coworker's sister. And so we want to remember these needs. And of course, let's remember Sister Peggy. We certainly miss her this morning. Let's remember those that are sick among us. Let's remember Israel. I don't know if you caught that last night. Iran attacked Israel. Um, and, of course, everybody in the world is uh, spewing their ideas of what Israel should do. Um, whether they, Some say don't do anything, and some say that they should do something. And um, we need to pray for Israel. Scripture tells us to do that. Pray for the peace of Israel. Israel and so let's and of Jerusalem so let's let's do that let's remember Israel in prayer and this this time um, I read one uh, one article that says that uh, it seems like right now the entire world is is uh, on a balance of whether we're going to go have another world war or not and uh, you know I I don't know about those things but I do know that there. That he that our God is still on the throne, and I know He allows some things that we don't prefer, uh, but He's got a plan for all these things. And so let's let's everyone uh, pray that the Lord would have His will and His way 
in our nation and in our world. Um, let's remember our college kids. Uh, let's remember our missionaries this morning. Let's remember our school. Uh, the uh, boys' quartet is out this morning, and so uh, I think they have this week and then another in two weeks, and then um, Kira's group has just one more week. So Kira seems very happy about that. Um, I know that they enjoy doing it because because uh, they keep going back and doing it um, year after year. But uh, let's pray for the pray for them. Oh, and we have Ryland's. You're in that group too. So um, let's let's pray for our groups as they're finishing out. The Lord would bless them and help them. Do you remember our children's church? My wife starts uh, her uh, set of weeks this week, and I'm sure she'd appreciate your prayers. Um, in case you don't know, at the end of the school year is a busy time for teachers, and it gets to be extra fun because we have a graduate this year. So I know that she would appreciate your prayers as well. Needs on your heart you'd like us to remember. All right, let's remember Wes's family. They, Wes's aunt is home and in hospice, and the family is in need of prayer during this time. Anything else? All right. Let's remember the sick among us, and uh, let's also remember each other. I know that you have unsaved loved ones. I know there's burdens that you're carrying, and um, I don't usually ask for a show of hands because I know every single person has unspoken requests. There's not a one of us that that is living, you know, way above life, right? We all have challenges we all have uh people we're praying for and uh, we uh and i would like to just add that i have a special unspoken there's a, a family that um things are are it looks like the family's going to end up in in perhaps in divorce and and uh, we're that we're working with in our community and so we just think uh lord knows all about this situation and so um <clears throat> and i know you all have those things each one. And so let's go to prayer knowing that we serve a God who's who's full of love. In fact, he's not just full of love. Scripture tells us he is love. Amen. So means that can well let's kneel before the Lord. Let's have a good season of prayer.
to the Lord for prayer. Right. By way of announcement, next week in the morning service, we'll be taking up an offering uh, for the new uh, course books that we've been singing out of. We didn't this morning, but, but we have quite a few times already, and especially Wednesday, Alex has been uh, pulling out. He's been learning some new courses, so songs that he's never uh, sung before, but uh, especially um, those of us from back east, as you all call it, uh, we, uh, we know a lot of those songs, and, and anyways, we've been enjoying it. And if, you, um, if you're wanting to learn some new choruses, uh, Wednesday night, that's the place to be. And so uh, I've been encouraged uh, with, with those, and I'm hoping some of those choruses will become well-known to us, maybe to the point where we could even sing them uh, spontaneously as the Lord would move in our services. Um, so we will be having that offering. Um, I don't know what the final cost is going to be, um, but I believe it's going to be about a thousand dollars. And so um, uh, we we are looking forward to um, continuing to learn more courses. I'm hoping I'll learn a few that I don't know already. The 28th, we'll be having our fellowship night, and so bring a snack, a game, a friend. Uh, we're looking forward to that. We trying to remember, I think we had one maybe in January, and that's the last time we've been able to have it. It's been a while. And so let's, uh, as many as I can, let's uh, be a part of that. And then this is not in your bulletin, but um, I believe May the 12th is uh, baccalaureate in the evening service. And so uh, we do have a graduate this year. Brandon is graduating. And then the... Uh, May the 19th, we'll be having a special graduation service here in the morning with the fellowship after that. And uh, if you have a graduate of kindergarten, eighth grade, or senior, please let us know. Um, the only one that we know so far is Brandon. Um, but we have a special surprise. I think we can announce it now. Uh, we're going to have a special speaker that morning. Year after year, since I've been here, I have spoken the graduation service at, at our church, and uh, and that's fine, but wouldn't it be nice to hear someone else for a change? I think so, anyways. So, any, uh, Brandon's grandfather, Trisha's uh, father, will be speaking in that service, and so um, Larry, uh, Larry Major will be the special speaker, and so uh, we're looking forward to these events. Anything else I should mention this morning? The secretary's not glaring at me, so I think I'm good. My wife's not glaring at me. We're good. Um, all right, at this time, let's open our hearts as we see the ministry of music. Uh, Kleins and Kelsos, Kelsos will be uh, singing for us. And, uh, and while they're coming, let me, I've got a couple of thank you cards. Let me, let me hit those. I, I sometimes forget this. Dear church family, many thanks for the invitation to come for your spring revival. We have loved being with you all again. Uh, thank you for your generous offering and for the many meals provided. Thank you to the Morfords for your hospitality. May we all strive to make it to heaven one day. Our love and prayers, the Hellmans, and then Rebecca and Bob sent uh, a thank you. The card is so nice of you to remember me in such a thoughtful way. Thank you so much for your contribution. It is, uh, means a lot to us to be able to keep our worker and thus my job during this time. And so we had... Um, these two thank you cards, and we'll try to remember to get these posted. All right, Kleins and Kelsos, minister to us as the Lord has led this song on your heart. Are there crosses too heavy to carry? And burdens too heavy to bear Are there heartaches and tears and anguish And no one who seems to care Standing somewhere in the shadows You'll find Jesus He's a Stand. 
Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful that he stands in the shadows? Amen. I'm thankful that we can be aware of his presence. Amen. It's a course I've said, that's a course we've sang lots in my life. I don't know how many times, but it seems like we've sang that course a lot. But the verses often get lost. And uh, thank you, Kleins and Kelsos, for singing a beautiful song this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, once again to Matthew chapter 6. Uh, this is not the last time we'll be turning to Matthew chapter 6. We're plodding along. Um, it is amazing to me how what I thought was going to be a one-time sermon to get us started on the year has just, the sermon just, is it's a sermon that never ends, it feels like, and uh, you'll, I trust that you will not become weary with it. Um, originally, I, I wanted this to, I thought that we were going to be talking about putting God's kingdom first in our lives, and that's really what it is, but it's really become more of an in-depth look at the Sermon on the Mount, and more so than what we intended uh, originally. Um, sometimes the Holy Spirit just kind of takes us down a path and we think, well, this will just be a short path and it turns out to be a long one. But the Lord knows and we're uh, trusting that he will help us. Matthew chapter 6, now verse 33 has been our theme text. This is the, I believe, the center the, of the of the sermon, the, the, the key point that Jesus is trying to teach us is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And we've talked about how we do that. We spent numerous weeks on, on that topic. And now, uh, and starting last week, we, we began to look at what are the blessings? What are the promises? And this is one of the things that I love about God is he doesn't just come to us and say, here, do it. But he often brings an invitation and a promise of blessings if we will. And, you know, I read through the Old Testament and I see all these promises of blessings. And um, I know in Deuteronomy sometimes that can be a challenging book for us to read. But really, you, what you see there is that God says that there are punishments if you don't, but there are great rewards if you will. And I think sometimes we can be kind of negative and we can focus on the punishments. We can focus on, well, this is what's going to happen if I, if I don't do it. But I really believe, and you see this especially, I feel like, in the New Testament, where God really wants to emphasize the good. He wants to emphasize the blessings. He wants to emphasize the, all these good things because that's what he wants to do. I don't know about you, but as a parent, I much rather reward my kids than discipline them. I, I never found f discipline fun. I didn't. I never have enjoyed it. I think it's a miserable thing. And even sometimes, I have uh, I have some of my children who are so sensitive that if I'm even teaching them, saying no, not this way. That I need. It, I want it done this way. I can get tears. And so I have to, you know, even this morning, I, I was trying to, to remind one of my children of something, and I said, now listen, I'm not upset. Before I even started, before I even told them what I wanted to tell them, I had to say, I'm not upset. You're not in trouble. Uh, we don't need tears. I didn't say that part, but, but that's what I was trying to indicate. We don't need tears because this, this is just a teaching moment. This is a reminder. And if you never had a child like that, um, well, I'm sorry you didn't. It's, it's got its own challenges. Now, some of our children, uh, especially one in particular, um, they were not that sensitive, and uh, they might go to war with you over, over just about anything, it seems like. But um, thankfully, they're no longer that way. But really, it's much better. We want to, as parents, to be able to reward our children. And God, being the perfect father, he wants to reward us. He wants to bless us. He's not just there looking for us to mess up so he can whack us, but he's, he's also, and much more so, much more so, he said, let me, let me do something good for you. 
Let me reward you. Let me bless you. In fact, isn't that how the Sermon on the Mount starts, is with those blessings? But if we look at the context, I guess I'm preaching, and I'll just go ahead and, and, and get preaching, I guess. Lord knows we need him. We've been praying. But if we look at the context of Matthew 6.33, we, that word but goes refers back to those previous verses. That, and what is that about? They're, they're about the things that we need. They're about food and clothing and shelter and security. All these things that we have need of. And the things that cause us anxiety. I suppose that... I'm the only one here who's ever worried about paying a bill. Wondering how we were going to be able to pull the money together. And I, I'm sure none of you have ever struggled with that. That you just, well, it's the Lord's money. It's the Lord's. No worries about it. There's some people like that, it seems like. They, they, they wouldn't know what it is to worry about something if the world was falling apart. If the apocalypse was actually happening, they'd be like, oh, well. It's just another Tuesday. But there's some, there's some that, well, it's easy to worry. I had a dear loved one that truly, and this was said of them, and, I, and, and it was true, if they didn't have anything to worry about, they'd go over to the neighbor's house to find something about, in their life to worry about. They were just that kind of person. They had, they, they were just, there was always something that, that was needed attention. There was always something that was a problem. There was always something that wasn't quite right. And I hope I'm not to that degree, and, and I hope you're not to that degree. And yet some, some here probably do struggle with anxiety. Not just, maybe not just a little bit of worry, but real anxiety. Where you stress over little things and every little thing is a big thing perhaps you need to get medicine or or even go into therapy for that and there's no shame in that but here's the thing there is a stigma to that there is this belief that somehow that if we have these anxieties then then we must be in sin because how many times does Scripture tell us not to worry? And so if you're worrying, then you're, you're violating a command. I, I don't see not worrying as a command as much as I, I see it as an invitation to trust. We, it's a, it, it, it's, you know, when I tell my child when they're worrying over something, don't worry about it, I have it. That's not a command. They're not getting spanked if they continue to worry. I'm wanting them to understand that this problem is no longer their problem. I have taken it upon myself. The problem that they're weighing down with and they're struggling with or, or crying over or whatever the situation may be, and I said, don't worry about it. I've got it. Now, if they worry, what is that a reflection of? It's a reflection of our relationship isn't it? It's a reflection on of our relationship. Now, you, now, again, some of us are prone to worry. Some of us are prone to anxiety. And it isn't that we don't have faith. In fact, we take that anxiety and, and, and we cast it upon the Lord, and yet it's like a boomerang, isn't it? For some of us, we, we cast our anxiety on the Lord, and then, it, I mean, it just comes right back. I don't recommend doing this, but there was a time when it was deemed acceptable that if you had an old dog you didn't want anymore, you just drove it out to the country and you dropped it off and then you took off. Again, I don't think that's the right thing to do and, and society looks down on that, but how many times did we hear the story where the dog made it back home? 
And for some of us, anxiety is like that. We try to drop it off at, at the throne uh, uh, of heaven and saying, Lord, here's this anxiety. I don't want it anymore. Here it is. And we go to leave, and it gets up and gets off the, off the, off the altar, and it, it starts trotting behind us. Does that mean that you don't trust God? Does that mean that you don't have faith in God? No, I don't think that so. But I also believe that God is giving us an invitation. Jesus, as he's speaking to us, he says, if you'll put God's kingdom first, you're not going to have to worry about your clothes. It's going to be taken care of. You're not going to have to worry about what you're going to eat. I'm going to take care of it. That's my responsibility. You say, Pastor, does that mean I get to quit my job? Yes. Yes, it means you can quit your job and go uh, and, and not work anymore if that's what he tells you to do. If that's what Jesus tells you you need to do in order to put his kingdom first. But I dare say that very few of us, perhaps none of us, will, uh, will have that as the requirement that God gives us in order to put his kingdom first. But we do know we do know of people where that is true. Even our dear brother Wes Peterson had to quit his job, his drywalling career. And he had to trade that in to be a missionary and rely on the support of God's people to survive. Think about that for a moment. There is... There is. I know some of you thought I was joking when I said yes, that, that does mean that. But, it's, but it, for some people, putting God's kingdom first does mean that. For some people, it does mean that we leave our homes and we leave our jobs and we, and we go and we do something that the whole world shakes their head and says, what's wrong with you? But Jesus is inviting us when he says, if you'll put my kingdom first, I will take care of your responsibilities. It doesn't mean that you don't work and it doesn't mean that you don't pay your bills and it doesn't mean that you don't take responsibility for those things, but it's ultimately we understand that Jesus is saying, I will provide the means for you to be taken care of. I will provide the means for you to have what you have need of. For most of us, that means he's provided us with the job and the health and the strength and the knowledge and the know-how, perhaps the education. In order to be able to have the jobs that we have, in order to provide our for what we have need of. There's not one of us that works a job, but what we receive that job daily by God's grace. You say, oh, not me. I, I mean, I, I have a good work ethic, and it was, you know, I, I've had it since I was a kid, and well, let's take your good work ethic, let's take where you're at, and let's take you to Lesotho, and uh, let's see if you can find work. Let's move you to the Congo and Somalia. Suddenly, your work ethic doesn't mean so much. Now, some of you that have maybe nursing degrees or some certain specialized skills may, may be able to get away with it, but probably the vast majority of us would be in all, an awful lot of trouble. And if we had been born there, under those conditions, without the ability to be educated, without the ability to get those skills, we might find ourselves in a very different situation. What am I trying to help us understand this morning is that what we have, God has blessed us with. Even our jobs, our careers, it is when we... But here's the thing. We have this tug of war that goes in the, on inside of us. Pull towards work. Pull towards, got to meet the, the needs. Got to gotta have, got to have, got to have. 
And it creates with them this, this struggle, this anxiety, because, Lord, what, we got to have this, and it's got to got to have that and there's never enough there's never enough California just recently upped the minimum wage for fast food workers now they'll have enough they'll have a livable wage now they can afford because we have we have given them more money and what are we finding? They still can't afford the food at the places that they work because all the fast food restaurants have upped their prices and now just a, a burger and a fry is $23. They can't afford to even eat at the places where they, where they work because as the prices, uh, 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 price of labor goes up, the price of everything else goes up. doesn't matter how much we give. Doesn't matter how much we do. And now there's there there's been a big push, especially with AI coming out. People are really feeling insecure and they're very concerned about, about the future. And so now they're talking about a guaranteed income. What does that mean? It means the government's gonna give you a stimulus check every single month. Forever. Now where the government's gonna get this money, I'm not sure. And they've run these experiments and they they work. Well, yeah, they work because it's in a small location and not everybody has it. All that's going to do is all, the price of everything is going to go up because that's how economy or economics works. And so they stress that the, the government's trying to solve these problems and they worry and they worry. And folks, this morning, you might be stressed about all these things. You might be worried about losing your job and your future and all these things. And listen, God knows what you need. And this is the battleground of your heart, of whether you're going to put God's kingdom first or your kingdom first. This is the battleground right here about, do I have time to pray today? No, I've got to get to work. I've got, we, I, I've got to work a double this week. I've got to, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I, I, I can't pray. I don't have time. I, I got to put, I got to put, my kingdom first. Oh, I don't have time to, to even do a little bit of devotion today because I've got, I got this responsibility. I got to take the kids to this activity and to this lesson and to this sport thing. And, and I've got all these responsibilities in my kingdom. I don't have time to do all these other things that God is telling me that I need to do to put his kingdom first. I don't have time to do that. And you know what happens? We feel guilty about that. And we suffer this struggle and this battle of anxiety. And it's a war within us. We know we should put God's kingdom first. And yet, we got to eat. We got to have a car. We got to put gas in the car. Got to pay insurance. Got to drive to the doctor. This, folks, this is where every single one of us is living. If we could win this, if we could really, truly believe that God says, if you'll put my kingdom first, I will take care of the rest of it. I will take care of your kingdom if you take care of my kingdom first. If we really, truly believe that. And we could win in this area. It would radically change our lives. What is interesting to me that we'll believe an earthly boss about this. If your boss, your, your boss wants you to put their business first, they want you to drop everything. To, if, if someone's sick, for you to do extra. They, we're willing to, to go above and beyond because they said, we will meet your needs. We will pay you this amount of money. We will, we will give you this in order for you to build your kingdom if you put our kingdom first. It's one of the complaints about the younger generation. They said, why would I spend my life building a corporation and, and uh, kingdom and not my own? But we believe it. And we'll trade our lives 
for a corporation and for their kingdom and build their kingdom so, and because they promise, well, they'll take care of our kingdom with the money they give us and with the uh, benefits, the, the sick days and the, uh, and the health insurance and, and all these things that they promise to, to do if we'll put their kingdom first. And some of us have spent our entire lives building up somebody else's kingdom so that we could have what we have need of to survive. And we retire, and you get 10 or 15 years of of retiring on, on what you've set aside and what your perhaps the pension that was set aside for us. And we have traded our lives to build someone else's kingdom in order to make sure that we're okay. Let me ask you, if we can trust an earthly corporation that their sole interest is themselves, why is it hard for us to trust our Heavenly Father who loves us and cares for us, who tells us that His sole interest is in loving His children? Why is it so much harder? It's because we don't have a guaranteed income. God doesn't say, I'll give you 20 bucks an hour. He just says, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. But how are you going to take it? I told you I'd take care of it. But I want to know all the details. I want you to tell me exactly how you're going to take care of my kingdom. Spell it out. I need a contract. Jesus says, I'm not offering you a contract. I'm I'm giving you my word. In fact, I've entered into into this with a blood covenant. This is far greater than any contract that you could ever sign. I've promised and proven it with my own blood that if you'll put my kingdom first, if you will trust me first, then I will take care of your kingdom. There's another reason why it's hard for us to trust and put his kingdom first is because even though he promises to meet all of our our physical needs and to give us the wisdom that we need, uh, that we have need of and, and all these things is is that we don't trust the Father to give us the kingdom, our kingdom, to bless our kingdom the way we want him to bless it. Let's go back to Brother Wes again this morning. Wes is building his business. He's, 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 and, and I can imagine, and I didn't ask him for permission to talk about him this morning, so... Uh, If he's watching, I'm probably going to get an email. But I can imagine that he's praying, and Lord, bless bless this and help us to find work and help us to be able to to meet the needs and 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 let's grow this. And and I need a truck, and I need and he's praying and he's asking and he's trusting God to build his kingdom. And God says, "Um, "All right, let me shift things that you've had a burden here. Now I'm going to shift things. I want to give you a burden for orphans." And suddenly, Wes's kingdom, his kingdom, his own personal kingdom, suddenly looks a whole lot different than the dreams he had two or three years before. And this creates anxiety for you and for me because we want to build our kingdom our way. God, give me the resources so that I can build it the way I want to build it. I want to shape it. I want it to form it. I want it to be look like I want it to look. I want to have the career. I want to have the house. I want to have the car. I want to have this of this is what I'm dreaming of. This is what I want. And if you do, I promise I'll 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 go to church and I'll give tithes and I'll give offerings and I'll help the missionaries and I'll, I'll do all those things. But give me the great, big, wonderful kingdom I'm dreaming of. But when we put God's kingdom first, 
we give God permission to shape our kingdom any way he chooses. But Lord, I really wanted that. I really wanted that. I wanted that particular blessing. I wanted that particular reward. I wanted that particular thing for my kingdom. I want to have this. Now, folks, sometimes God gives us the desires of our hearts. Sometimes the things that we want, God gives us. But sometimes we have to allow him to change our wants. And there are other times that we're going to have to take our wants to the cross and we're going to have to crucify our own wants. It isn't that God just changes our wants for us, but we're going to have to take them to the, to the cross and we're going to have to nail them there ourselves and say, I know this is what I want and I know this is what I desire, but God's kingdom will come first. It's easy, I think, for me to talk about things It's easy for me to talk about homes and cars and, and these kind of things, but your kingdom and my kingdom really, and this is where it gets a little harder, is when we talk about security. Having our, our kingdom safe. What does that mean? It means that we're healthy. It means that the bills are paid on time and, and we don't have to worry about that. It's our country is free from war. We don't have to worry about our, our children or our grandchildren being called into to a war that, that we don't want to be a part of. And we certainly don't want to lose someone we love over it. We certainly are a country not being attacked. And, 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 and we have all these things. And, and really, I think so many times... the where we struggle the most isn't about having that house or that car or that, you fill in the blank, whatever that might be, but really where the struggle is is, Lord, can you make sure that I feel safe? Lord, can you make sure that we never go hungry? Can you make sure we always have have? They don't have to be designer clothes, but can you make sure that we have at least nice clothes? And can you make sure, can you just make sure we're, that we have enough? And as Christians, sometimes we dial it up. See, the enemy is such a trickster that he will even put Christian language to it and, 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 and this fancy, uh, fancy might not even be the right word, but, but, but this religious holy trappings around it. I see it happen so often in our young people when, it, when it's, I just want to know the will of God. I just, I just need to know God's will. I don't know how many hundreds of conversations I've had with young people over the course of my ministry as they've struggled about they want to have the security of knowing God's will and over and over I have to t I tell them I said you're not going to accidentally mess this up you will know God's will when you need to know it you can only mess up God's will for your life when you choose to violate what you already know to be his will We want to know the next part of the plan. What's next? God, what's next for your plan? I'm putting your kingdom first. What's your will? But really, what's underneath of that and what's driving that is, is, Lord, I need to have security. I need to know that I'm safe. I need to know that I'm not going to mess up anything. I need to make sure everything is going to be okay. And that's not what Jesus is promising here. He's not promising that you're going to never have question marks there are times that you're going to go and say i'm not sure what the next step is and that's why we have to stand still and know that he is god because we don't know which way to go 
Sometimes there's going to be five, ten, a hundred paths in front of us. And we're not going to know which one. And we're just going to have to stand still and know that he is God. And when he's ready for us to move, that he will reveal which path he wants for us. Say, what if I go down the wrong path by accident? Well, that's all right. God has the ability to move you to the right path. Sometimes God takes paths that don't seem to make sense. We, we're straight line kind of people. If I'm going from here to independence, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for the quickest, easiest path. You know the road. You've, you've driven it many times. You know exactly the way you go to independence because you believe that's the best way. And very rarely do you go a different way. Maybe occasionally you'll take the scenic route. But rarely. Most of the time, you know the path you want to take. It's the straight line. That's the way we go. But God sometimes causes us to wander around in a wilderness, and he does so because he's helping us to get ready and to prepare us and to show us where he wants us to go. So why doesn't God just take me from point A to point B? Because there's some things that we need to learn. But see, this is what Jesus is trying to teach us in this path, in the entire Sermon of the Mount is, is all these things you're worried about? When you put God's kingdom first, you don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to worry about knowing God's will because you're putting his kingdom first and he's just going to lead you every step of the way right into his will. This morning... The enemy wants to get us believing that we are somehow responsible for building our kingdom. What if I told you this morning that if you build his kingdom, that he has a place in his kingdom for you, and you don't have to worry about your kingdom at all? Because you don't need to have a house because he's preparing a house for you. He doesn't, you don't need to worry about a job because he's preparing a job for you. He don't have to worry about finances. He's already preparing that. You say, but pastor, wait a minute. This sounds, this, this sounds like you're almost like health and wealth nonsense. You just believe, just believe God and, and all these things are going to be just taken care of. Well, yes, I guess, I guess that does kind of sound like that. But here's, here's the part of it that, that I sometimes, where I feel like the health and wealth people kind of miss it and where we can kind of miss it if we go off the deep end this morning about what God is, is telling us. The scripture is full of the wisdom that we need to live life. There's wisdom. In fact, all of this these, this sermon, the, the chapters 5, 6, and 7 are just peppered with wisdom. And it isn't about taking a hands-off approach where, where, well, I'm just trusting the Lord. I'm just trusting the Lord. And then all of a sudden, they don't have. There's a reason that we have the Scriptures is because it's full of wisdom for living in His kingdom. It's not a lack of faith to save money for retirement. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't Jesus say not to lay up treasures for us on earth where, where um, rust and moth doth corrupt and to lay up treasures in heaven? Well, he does. But he's not talking about, he's not talking about building up for you some, some kind of wealth and some kind of thing so that you don't need the Lord anymore. What he's that's, that's what he's talking about is, is building up and spending our life on our own kingdom. You can go from uh, uh, dirt poor to being super wealthy and be 100% putting God's kingdom first because we're following his wisdom and we're following what, he, what he's asking us to do. And as we follow the principles of Scripture and, and we live out 
the wisdom that we have in Proverbs and, and we have in Ecclesiastes and we have in, uh, throughout the New Testament and really throughout the entire Bible as we live these things. And God blesses our kingdom. And yes, some are going to be blessed with wealth and some are going to be blessed with Seemingly not very much. But what's it matter? What's it matter if you have great wealth or if you're just poor? If his kingdom is first in your life and you're living by the wisdom of his word. I'm not talking about being foolish this morning. I'm not talking about saying, well, I don't have to worry about going to work tomorrow. I can just, I can just quit my job. I'm I'm not talking about, I'm talking about when we put God's kingdom first and we say, you know what, I have, there's so many things from life that's pressing me that I need to make sure today I put God's kingdom first. We've talked about what that looks like. This morning, we're not suggesting foolishness. In fact, I don't believe you can purposely be foolish and be putting God's kingdom first. Because part of, what Jesus says putting king, his kingdom first is living by the wisdom of God's word. And God's word tells us to provide for our families. God's word tells us to have an inheritance for our children. There are, so we're, there's not a contradiction. It's a cooperation. It's I put God's kingdom first, but I also live in wisdom of his word. It's not in, in war with each other. The war that we face is a, a war with, it, a, with whether we put God's kingdom or our kingdom first. But when we are putting God's kingdom first and we are living with the wisdom of the kingdom, not the wisdom of the world, but the wisdom of the kingdom, then it truly transforms our life. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things, all these things that Jesus has been talking about, your security, your food, your house, your career, your life, all the things that are a part of your kingdom that you want to build, Jesus tells us you put God's kingdom first and he'll take care of your kingdom. Why? Why? Not because he loves his kingdom so much, but because he loves you so much. And his kingdom, his kingdom isn't just heaven. That's not the kingdom he's talking about. He's talking about the kingdom that he is wanting to put here on earth where people, your neighbor and your children and your family and your your uh, co-workers and those people that are around you, that they are becoming a part of the kingdom. That's the kingdom he wants to build. It's not just the heavenly one, but it's the earthly kingdom that he is wanting to prepare in this world. What would you trade to see your children saved? What would you trade? What would you trade to see your neighbor life changed? What would you trade? You see, if we, if we talk about it in those terms, it becomes easy, doesn't it? But God doesn't offer us a contract, and he doesn't offer us the guarantees of these particular things. It's just simply put his kingdom first, and he'll take care of your needs. It means that we put it into his hands, not knowing what he's going to give us in return. not easy it's stressful i look back over my life and i think about the things that god has asked me to put into his hands that he wanted me to give him and, and not knowing what he was going to give me in return and i think about the struggles and the battles and and how hard it was over and over to give god these things and then to see what he's given me in return. 
I was like, well, if I had known how wonderful it was that you were going to give me, I would, it wouldn't have been such a struggle. It wouldn't have been so hard. If I'd have known what was in his hand, I'd have given up what I had without any, any trouble. If I really would have had a good understanding, now that I look back, I'm like, wow, I'd make that trade over and over and over again. If I had it to do all over again, the only thing that I would do differently is I would have given my life and I'd have given each of those things to God sooner. And if you've been serving the Lord for any length of time, you feel that same way. You look back and you see those things, you'd be like, I would give those to him sooner. I wouldn't have struggled over it. And yet this morning, or maybe this week, or maybe later this month, or, or some point this year, God's going to have his hand out and he's going to say, give me a this so that's in your kingdom. Put this that's in your kingdom into my hand. And he's got his hand behind his back. He's got something for you. And the devil's telling you it's a club. And the devil's telling you it's poverty. And the devil's telling you it's not worth it. What you have is of far more value. When that happens, when the enemy tells you that, I want you to not even talk to the enemy. I want you to stop and I want you to consider all the things that the Lord has ever asked you for and what he's given you in return. And ask yourself, has it ever been an unfair trade for you? Has there ever been one time that the Lord's asked for something that he has given you less than what he took? I don't believe it. I don't believe there's ever been one time. God loves to give his children rich gifts. Will you struggle with anxiety and worry? Probably. And when you do, come back to this promise right here and ask yourself, am I putting God's kingdom first in my life? And if I am, can I trust that he loves me enough to take care of all these things just like you promised? Do I believe when Jesus said that these things will be taken care of, that they are? And if you look at his track record, you'll find it was always perfect. There's so much that I'd like to share. So, not, don't feel done this morning, but I, I know that you probably are. May God help us. May God help us to realize that the hand that he has behind his back, the rewards that he wants to bless us with, are greater than the things that he's asking for. You don't believe me? Ask Wes. Email Wes this morning or when, uh, this afternoon. When you get home, ask him, is it worth it? You Look at all these things that you gave up to go be a missionary. You had so much. What, was it worth it? Is there, are, you, are you sorry? Was, was, was the rewards that God had for you, is it less than? Ask him. I told you I didn't reach out to him. I didn't ask him. I'm putting him on the spot this morning. You know how I can do that? Not because I know Wes. I do know Wes, but not because I know Wes, but because I know the Father. That's how I can make that assertion this, this afternoon. I can make that assertion because I know that God never fails to do what he says he will do. Stand together. Amen. Charles, it's so good to have you with us. Would you dismiss us in prayer?